Hello and welcome to Nikolai's genetics lessons and today's question is if the alleles of the following genotype of the dehybrid cross in a coupling phase cis form and the distance between the genes 20 centimorgans identified genotypes of the parental and recombinant progeny and its proportion from a test cross. If the alleles following alleles of the dihybrid are in repulsion phase trans identify genotypes of the parental and recombinant progeny and its proportion from a test cross. So here is a genotype of one parent and we are told that this parent is dihybrid. So what does it mean? So imagine that this is two homologous chromosomes and somewhere here on this chromosome we have dominant allele Y and on the other homologous chromosome recessive allele Y. And here on the same chromosome we have dominant allele R and on the other homologous chromosome we have recessive allele R. So as you see we have here two loci and on one chromosome we have two dominant alleles, dominant Y and R. So we call such chromosome cis form, just like in chemistry. And here we have two recessive alleles, we call this also cis form. But if for example we have here dominant allele Y and here recessive allele R and here is going to be dominant allele R and recessive Y allele, then this is going to be in trans form. So this chromosome would be trans and this chromosome also would be trans. Why we call this genotype dihybrid? Because this person, for example, who has this chromosome number one, one inherited from the, say, father, another from the mother, would be hybrid for the gene Y and hybrid for the gene R. So dihybrid. And here is the genotype. And we also told that we have to perform test cross. So what does it mean? That means that we take another parent of the known genotype, which is going to be also same genes, but instead of, for example, dominant Y here, it's going to be Y recessive, Y recessive here, and small r recessive r and small r recessive r here. So parent 1 here, parent 2 here. And we call this test cross. We also know that the distance between gene y and r 20 centimorgans. And here is going to be a progeny which we call f1 progeny. From parent 1 progeny can get for example this chromosome and no crossing over is going to happen. So in this case we say that progeny are going to inherit chromosome with two dominant alleles Y and dominant R. But from parent 2 no matter which chromosome it's going to inherit, it's going to inherit the same Y, small y and small r alleles on the same chromosome even if crossing over is going to happen here, still we are going to have small y and small r allele on the same chromosome. So from the parent 2, only one variant of the genotype, which is going to be small y and small r. Another variant would be if parent 1 is going to give this chromosome, again, imagine that crossing over didn't happen. So in this case, the progeny is going to inherit small y and small r allele on the same chromosome. And from the parent 2, no matter which chromosome it's going to inherit, it's going to be the only variant with recessive y and recessive r alleles on this chromosome. But now imagine that crossing over during meiosis happened here. In this case progeny, F1 progeny is going to inherit from parent 1 following chromosome which is going to be recombinant with dominant Y and recessive allele R on the same chromosome. 
because crossing over happened here. And we call this recombinant chromosome dominant Y and recessive R on it. Again, parent 2 only can give only one variant of the chromosome. So this is going to be recessive Y and recessive R allele on it. But if crossing over happen here, it's not only going to produce new recombinant with dominant Y and recessive R allele on the same chromosome, but also with recessive Y and dominant R allele on the same chromosome. This is also going to be recombinant chromosome. Let's also list it here. So on the same chromosome, we are going to see recessive Y allele and dominant R allele. And again, parent 2 only can give one variant which has recessive Y and recessive R allele on the same chromosome. We say that if no recombination happened, like in this case, this is going to be parental genotype. And this is also going to be parental genotype because this chromosome come here without any recombination, parent 2 only can give one variant. Here, F1 progeny got this chromosome without recombination and uh, another chromosome came from the parent 2. Also, it doesn't matter if recombination happened here or not, still it's going to be the same variant. So these two are parental variants, parental genotypes. But these two, we say, are going to be recombinant variants. So this one and this one. Now we have to answer the question how many recombinant variants in F1 generation we are going to have. Take a look. If the distance between gene Y and R 20 centimorgans, that means that in a progeny we are going to have 10% of this variant of the recombinant chromosome and 10% of this variant. So together they account for 20% in a progeny of the recombinant genotypes. That means that the rest 80% have to be 40% this variant of the parental genotype and another 40% this variant of the parental genotype. So we gave an answer to the first question and now let's answer the second question. What if alleles of the dihybrid are in repulsion phase or trans? So again, parent 1, parent 2 here, and here is the two chromosomes, homologous chromosomes of the parent 1, two homologous chromosomes of the parent 2. So this time we are going to have, again, at the same position or same loci, following genotypes. Capital Y here, recessive Y here, the same as here. But for the gene R, we are going to have recessive R here and dominant R here. So this time, as you see, we call this trans position. Not this like here, but trans because one gene is dominant or one allele is dominant, another recessive. Here is a recessive, another is dominant. Still, genotype is going to be the same. Capital Y, small y, capital R, small r. Genotype is going to be the same. But now, as you see, these two chromosomes are not the same as these two chromosomes. And because we are going to have here the same test cross, so parent 2 genotype is going to be small y, small r, small y, small r. This is what we call test cross when one parent is going to be homozygous recessive for each locus of the interest. Again, in a F1 progeny in the following generation, we are going to get four genotypic variants. So I will draw these chromosomes right away in order to save a time. So four genotypic variants, but they are going to be different, not the same as what we see here. And I'm going to put all the right away also. 
So this is going to be locus for the gene Y and this is going to be locus for the gene R. So from the parent two, as you see, progeny only can get one genotypic variant, small y, small r. Even if crossing over is going to happen here, which I didn't show here, but again, even if it's going to happen, it doesn't change anything. So let's put this genotype here. So small r, small y, small r, small y, small r, small y and small r. But now let's take a look what kind of variants of the chromosome progeny is going to get from parent one. For example, if crossing over didn't happen, progeny are going to get chromosome with dominant y recessive r. And another chromosome, if crossing over didn't happen, would be small y and capital R chromosome. But if crossing over did happen here, we are going to get new recombinants, capital Y and capital R. So capital Y and capital R here. And another variant would be small y and small r. So small y and small r. And this time this is going to be recombinant variant. So this recombinant and this recombinant. But these two are going to be parental genotypes. Again, just like in the first example, the distance between the two genes are going to be the same, 20 centimorgans. That means that in a progeny we are going to see 10% of this variant of the recombinant, another 10% is going to be this variant of the recombinant, and the rest, 80%, would be 40% of this parental variant and also 40% of this parental variants. So this is how cis and trans positions of the alleles affect uh, genotypes in F1 progeny. And this is all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next video. Goodbye.